So we need a kind of palate cleanser, right? We need a we need a thing when we get particularly coiled up in the insanity that can happen in the mind. I got this garden outside, and uh, obviously, and the soil is really fertile. It kind of makes me nervous. I hope somebody didn't pour some kind of biochemical shit that is like making stuff grow really fast out there. It's just amazing how stuff grows out there. And weeds, man, they will spring up overnight. I'll come outside and there'll be big weeds, like a shit ton of them that just came out of nowhere. And this is what the mind is like, which is why you don't just go to your mind once and adjust things. You have to keep returning to the mind, studying it, and if you're not careful, or maybe you're not like me, which is quite possible, if I'm not careful, my mind will spring up with insane thoughts. Let me give you an example. I was watching, and I, you know, who knows how these things happen on the internet? The odd pathways that we take as we gather up completely pointless bits of data. Um, I was watching a, I was watching Dead Mouse on Twitch. Dead Mouse, the sort of cunty EDM musician guy who's, um, he makes some pretty good music. Some of his music is pretty great. And um, I don't know if all of it's great. I only actually listened to like a couple of his songs on the internet and I thought that's pretty great. He shit talks everybody, which is hilarious, but ultimately um, pointless. My mind is trying to compare me to Dead Mouse which is insane. It's literally insanity. And so I was sort of like, you know, I'm aware of that. Like I'm, when my mind is, you know, like when you, when, when you have a particularly foul bout of flatulence, for example, and you're aware that it stinks, like you, you, you know that came out of your body. Well, that's how it can be with thoughts like this. You don't have to let them grab you, and yet you must pay attention. Like if I have a particularly awful explosion of flatulence, then I kind of have to look back and think, man, I don't know if I should go to that bebimbop place anymore, because every time I, I do, it, it makes me explode Fukushima-level farts out of my ass. In the same way, when you get a loony thought coming out, like, man, how come I don't have a, a, a massive studio, like multi-millionaire record producer Dead Mouse? It's time for you to sit down and think a little bit about why that exists in your mind. What's the underlying um, root cause of that? And so I'm, I'm sort of standing and, and then I rem thinking about this in front of my synthesizers, which I have no idea how to use. And it, I think to myself, um, okay, 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 we should pray, we should pray. This is a prayer moment. And those are moments where you get really afflicted. Whether you believe in God or whatever, you could still pray. You could still call out. You could still try to manifest something, try to produce a placebo healing effect. And so I, I, I you know, I'm just like, please, God, please, God, let me not help me not have these kinds of thoughts. Why why am I jealous of dead mouse right now? This is this this day can't go. If your day starts off with you being jealous of dead mouse. It could end up with you at Coney Island getting fisted by a, a troop of acrobatic mime dwarves. So we don't want that to happen. So anyway, I, I got this package yesterday that I hadn't opened. And after I say this prayer, I go and open this package. It's from my friend at the... Um, at the Ram, from the, I met at the Ramdas retreat, and he sent me this beautiful prayer by... Geshe Longri Tamka. It comes from AD 1054, 1054, a long time ago. And um, I'm going to read it to you just so that we can do a little mental bleach prior to diving into the dark, satanic, and beautifully hypnotic waters of conspiracy and the exploration of the ways that we have been tricked by the state and other invisible dark powers and principalities. So let's read this. And if you find the garden of your mind getting overrun with jealous thoughts or comparison or any of this stuff, then this is a good prayer. You could probably look it up. The eight verses of training the mind. 
with the intention to attain the ultimate supreme goal that surpasses even the wish-granting jewel, may I constantly cherish all living beings. Whenever I associate with others, may I view myself as the lowest of all, and with a pure intention, may I cherish others as supreme. Examining my mental continuum throughout all my actions, as soon as a delusion of self-cherishing develops, whereby I or others would act inappropriately, may I firmly face it and avert it. Whenever I see unfortunate beings oppressed by evil and violent suffering, may I cherish them as if I had found a rare and precious treasure. Even if someone I have helped and of whom I had great hopes nevertheless harms me without any reason, may I see him or her as my holy spiritual guide. When others out of jealousy or anger harm me or insult me, may I take defeat upon myself and offer them the victory. In short, may I directly and indirectly offer help and happiness to all my mothers and secretly take upon myself all their harm and suffering. Furthermore, through all of the above practices, together with a mind undefiled by stains of conceptions of the eight extremes, and that sees all phenomena as illusory, may I and all living beings be released from the bondage of mistaken appearance and conception. Wow. Man, that's a good one. That is a good one, friends. You know, some of it's antiquated. What the fuck is a wish-granting jewel? We can imagine, but these are like probably back then that was a thing everybody said. Have you found your jewel? But now we don't really know, but the essence of the thing is beautiful. Particularly, in short, may I direct and indirectly offer help and happiness to all my mothers and secretly take upon myself all their harm and suffering. This, this, the reason mothers is plural, which is odd, obviously, because we only have one mother, is because the Tibetans view the cycle of incarnations that we've had as a kind of infinite, endless cycle, which means that anyone that you cross paths with has been your mother, has been your child, your dog has been your mother, a gnat has been your mother, Anything has been your mother. Everything. We were all taking turns playing the game of being a stranger to others, being a brother to others, being a sister to others, being, being a lover to others, being a mother to others. This is the being an enemy to others. This is the, the, the never-ending game of life that we all play. So that's a kind of beautiful way the next time you to look at someone. It's like, that person used to be my mother. I should treat that person like they used to unconditionally love me in some past incarnation, and now we're playing a game of forgetfulness where I don't recognize you and you don't recognize me. Pretty trippy stuff, man. The eight verses of training the mind. Okay, there it is now.